Welcome back. You're listening to the discussion, Accelerating Decision Making by Enabling JADC2, sponsored by Raytheon Intelligence and Space on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is Roy Azevedo, the president of Raytheon Intelligence and Space. Roy, you talked about the last in the last segment about eyes and ears, and, and I thought that was a, a good way to put it. You know, you know, see before, hear before. You have to engage or understand what's happening on, and, and before you can defeat, you have to find. And, and I think one of the ways the DoD is going down that path is through this thing called JADC2. So let's start at the beginning, the Joint All Domain Command and Control. It's uh, one of those buzzwords that we all love to talk about, but what is it? Why is it important? Just give us a little bit of background to start. So my, my view or our view is that Joint All Domain Command and Control is all about getting data and information that is high quality, it's secure, and getting it to the people who need to make decisions fast. And that's what JADC2, I think, is mostly around, is being able to make decisions faster using uh, the data from all domains and throughout the services. The joint is the joint services, and of course with our allies. So it's the way that, it's a vision for how the Department of Defense envisions um, how to operate in a highly contested environment. I was recently moderated a panel with the folks from Army, PEO, C3T, and they talked about the data fabric and how the data fabric is the, the basis for this move to JADC2, among other things. And what's interesting is the move from data centricity to move toward data centricity from net centricity. What's the difference, and maybe people have heard these terms before, when you look at that move that the DOD is doing, what does it mean for you at Raytheon Intelligence and Space? So the data is probably what we're the most focused on because yeah. that's what we generate. We probably generate and collect more data than anybody in the world in terms of what we do for our customers. And what's important is that it's very high quality. So when we're providing information of which decision makers are having to make some high consequence actions, that's the thing that we focus on is quality and security of that data. And of course, having it at the speed that our customers are, are requiring at this point. And that's where, in many ways, JADC2 comes in, is that's the, the, the quality, because you're getting it from all domains, as you mentioned, and then the speed factor. Uh, so, so let's talk a little bit more about JADC2. Uh, what you, what's happening with it? We, we hear a lot of people talking about it, but where, what, what's the latest from Raytheon's perspective? Well, one of the exciting things that uh, took place in June was we participated in a joint exercise uh, that's called Valiant Shield 2022. Uh, we have a modified 727 aircraft that participated in the exercise, and we were able to demonstrate multi-domain information being shared to distributed defense systems. So the way that we did that is we had the 727, KC-135, and four FNA-18s where there was a simulated sea environment and our 727 used radar and electronic intelligence to identify that simulated threat, distribute it to the FNA-18s so that they could prosecute what they saw. And it included a command and control center in the continental United States. So multi-domain, distributed defense systems, information, fast and securely. That, that was exciting for us. That sounds exciting and, and sounds kind of something fun to watch. Uh, did you get to watch it? I didn't get to oh, watch okay. it. We had an entire team out in uh, Guam, as a matter of fact. They probably didn't need more management. But somebody else to watch, exactly. Well, it sounds like, uh, and, and it was successful. That's the key word, right? Very successful. And, and as maybe walk me through how it was this, when you talk about Valiant Shield exercise, did you propose to DOD, the Army, whomever, to say, hey, this is what we want to show you? Or did they ask you? How does, how does the process work, generally? Um, it, it's both. The customer um, comes out and asks what good ideas we have to participate so that we could show the military, the Department of Defense, what can be done. And so we float these ideas, and the good ideas are accepted. And uh, I'm very proud of the fact that our team was able to participate and throughout the entire exercise and demonstrated this multi-domain distributed data. And it was um, certainly something that hadn't been done in the past, so it shows Raytheon Intelligence in space, JADC2 infrastructure. 
was this one of those examples that we talked about in the first segment about a, kind of a little bit of a risk, but a known risk? You knew kind of what you're getting into, or, or was this uh, uh, the term I use, spaghetti against the wall a little bit, and you, <laughs> some of it's actually stuck? So I, I'll tell you how I describe it to, yeah. to our own workforce, and it's a calculated risk. We know going in that there are some things that may or may not work. We are absolutely at the edge of technology in almost everything that we do. So not everything's gonna work the first time. Thankfully, on this exercise, everything did work. And when our customer asked us to do something a little bit different, our team sprung to action, made the modifications, went out and demonstrated that different thing that the customer asked for. And many times that's what DOD and really any agencies are looking for. It's not just the, can you make it work, but can you be agile? Okay, this change, this factor change, okay, deal with that factor. It sounds like you, you all, whether it was the Army or whoever the customer was, was asked that, can you change, and you were able to turn a little bit. It is, and it's, if you think about it, that's sort of the way that things go in any sort of conflict. Yes. Nothing's ever planned, there are surprises. How fast can you react to the surprises? How well can you perform in those surprises? When it becomes even more contested, are you still able to make decisions and make them fast? So the success of, of Valiant Shield exercise, what, what's the next kind of set of steps? What does the DOD do with that information? What happens next for Raytheon? It, you know, we have a success, we do, hopefully it just doesn't go into the closet and on the shelf. Yeah, no, that's exactly the way the services are thinking too in all of these exercises that they're doing. What's the leave behind capability? Fact of the matter is that the customers are still evaluating the results of those exercises. And there are decisions that are going to be made into what are we going to put into operations. So that's still being decided. All right, and obviously more to follow up as things come out about uh, the Valiant Shield exercise. Uh, what's this mean more broadly for Raytheon then, that fact is you're able to demonstrate this technology, whether or not it's for Valiant Shield or for future, what does this say about, okay, here's where we're at with the technology, here's where we can go next. Like, what's this mean for you internally from as you are thinking about the continuing to develop JADC2 type of we, technologies. We talked about that it's all about the data. Right. And when you step back and take a look at Raytheon Intelligence and Space, we've got sensors and capabilities in every domain, cyberspace, undersea, surface, air, and then in space, of course. So we have these sensors, we have this data. How are we able to analyze that data? How are we able to transmit it securely to all those that need it? And so those are the kinds of things that we work on every single day. What are the courses of actions that commanders can take? Using AI and ML with all of this data is absolutely critical to, to the future of our forces. And uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we are out front on some of these things in terms of developing AI, ML-based software decision tools. I'm glad you brought that up. I was gonna go there next because I'm, I was gonna say, I imagine there's a role for that technology in this in the exercise that you showed, that you demonstrated for DOD, maybe talk more broadly about why it's it's a volume of data, it's a velocity of data, it's a veracity of data that really you need these tools. What, how are you all starting to apply AI, ML to JADC2 environments? Well, the one thing that I absolutely agree with you is the volume of data is what's driving the absolute necessity. The workload on operators is getting more and more, and so, any kind of information that can be used that's artificial intelligence, machine learning, to enable decisions and make those decisions simpler so that they can go handle other critical tasks are, are gonna help the operators that are out there. And, and that's the single biggest thing that's driving the need for AI ML. The key for any time you use AI ML is to train the algorithms and to deal with the I'll call it simple stuff. Simple is probably not the right word, but the base stuff, okay? Can I pull data from multiple data sources and find the trend and then pass it to the to the operator? Is that, where are we at in that effort, that spectrum of, okay, is it still early stages of AI and ML? Are we more advanced than we were three, five, seven years ago? I mean, I know we are, but, but how much more advanced and, and where, is, where is it going? The, the, the day where a machine is making a decision based on AI ML is still not here. Not that the technology isn't here, but the methodologies by which we prove out these things. So today, there's still a man, what is termed man on the loop of decision making. But the ability to take just 
um, unfathomable amounts of data and be able to use artificial intelligence, machine learning to do machine to machine interactions, which we do today. It was part of what we demonstrated in Valiant Shield was machine to machine. So it's here. Um, the fact that we have technologies that actually can explain to an operator why an AI algorithm came to a certain conclusion mm -hmm. is probably just as important as anything in this day and age. There's a lot of focus I know in DoD about the, the right uses of AI and ML, and I think that's what you're kind of getting to is, is that we got to this decision by these factors. Okay, now I can trust it or I can, well, it's missing some other context. Uh, what did you find out from Valiant Shield how you, when you applied AI and ML, like, was it, okay, we need to tweak it a little bit, it's working pretty well, is there any, is there any kind of that, again, I asked the question earlier, but from a Raytheon perspective, what did you find out about yourself from, the, from, the, from an AI ML perspective specifically? But, well, what we found out was the speed with which we were able to take multi-int sources, the electronic intelligence and the radar data, and develop a identification machine learning that was then passed on from machine to machine to the fighters. Mm -hmm. Now, the pilots are the ones that are the operators that are going to have to make decisions on the prosecution, but the information they were provided was based on uh, machine learning. Yeah. That's it's so impressive. I think so many times when we talk, when you hear about machine learning AI, it's it's this, a lot of people say, well, it's just the, it's a, it's a nice layer, right? It's the icing, it's not really the cake. And, and now it sounds like, just based on your example, they're starting to get into that cake layer where we're getting a little more depth, a little more um, stability to the entire effort. Is, is that what comes next for JATC2? Like when you look forward, where's, what's DOD's biggest challenges to kind of continue to develop JATC2? Because there's a ton of these types of exercises and projects and, and initiatives that are ongoing, but where is DOD have to, from your perspective, where's DOD heading with the JATC2 environment? So there, there's, not much question in our mind that in terms of JADC2, the thing that is most important is that command and control piece. And before you can command and control, you have to have very high assurity of data. And that is one area. We, we have data. How secure is it? What's the quality of it? And then what does it take to get that data? So you have many different sources of information. What are you going to use? to get that data from where? And what are you sacrificing if you're doing one task and not another? So all of that decision making, the courses of action, is one of the critical parts of this to include authorities on how decisions are made. The data challenge, though, is one that every agency is facing because quality is so difficult and, and, and assurity of that quality. Is there? Is, is DOD even in, in a tougher spot because the data is coming from this joint all domain, right? If you are just the Army and you're worried about Army data, there's a little bit more control you have. But if you're taking Air Force data, if you're taking Marine data, if you're taking Navy data, then you're going, okay, do I trust their data? Like, explain a little bit about that assurity piece. Oh, I think it is going to be around secure processing, which we're one of the leaders in the industry. Um, and so you first have to make sure that that data is that high quality. When I talk about high quality, it's also the assurity. Uh, you're still going to have to make a decision, you as a commander that get all this data, which data do you trust and which one are you going to say you don't trust? That's still going to be an element of leadership. Do you find that the through JADC2 or because of JADC2, you're getting, you're seeing the, the services and the defense agencies working differently around that assurity piece of data? Or are they having conversations or with you or, hey, I talked to the Army and I talked to the Air Force and they're saying not quite the same thing, but we're 80% there, we're 90% there about what data has to look like and, and the role of data, not just it's important and there's a lot, but but the trust factor and how they're looking at trust. I've been in this industry more than 30 years. And I can't walk into the Pentagon today without having each of the services talk about how they're going to fight jointly with the other services, JADC2 being an enabler. And you're absolutely right. Not everybody uses the same language, but everyone has the same intent, and they know how important it is in a contested environment to work jointly. 
Sounds like uh, Goldwater Nichols finally kicked in. Is that, is that where we're at now? Uh, what's finally, been, that's very good. 45 years in here. Pulled, <laughs> Great it, out reference. Of, pulled it out of my hat. There you Great go. reference. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break. We'll make some good references in the last segment, too. Uh, you're listening to the discussion Accelerating Decision Making by Enabling JADC2, sponsored by Raytheon Intelligence and Space on Federal News Network. <laughs> 